Welcome to the Bean Town Beatdown. Matthew Burris, Gabe Thomas, and this is a special edition of the Bean Town Beatdown because mm-hmm. this is our year-end review where um, we look forward to 2019. Yeah, exactly. Cheers yep. to that. Yep. Cheers to that. Of course, uh, as you all know, on um, Facebook, I announced uh, I will not be drinking for 30 days. So far, I've been sober for about a week. All right, all right, but it doesn't stop the celebrating spirit. Yep, exactly. But come New Year's Eve, <laughs> getting drunk and high. As a matter of fact, 2019 will be my last year of weed, and mm. more on that later on in the show. Okay, okay. All right, uh, so a lot of big things heading into 2019, a lot of questions for 2019 in the world of combat sports. Indeed, indeed. All right, first one. Will 2019 be the last year for Manny Pacquiao? And this is a big one because, uh, as we all know, uh, January 19th will be um, Manny Pacquiao versus Adrian Broner for the right. WBA Welterweight Championship. Indeed, and indeed. that will be on pay-per-view. That will also be the first major fight for Premier Boxing Champions. And oh, a little burp there. <laughs> as we all know, uh, Manny Pacquiao says that uh, should he win this fight, um, this could set up the rematch between him and Mayweather. Mm-hmm, right. And But, of course, if uh, should Broner win, uh, this could set up uh, a fight between Broner and Mayweather as well. Although Broner and Mayweather, they are, you know, they're back on good terms. But then again, you never know what, what what's going to happen with these two. These two are like an old married couple at this, <laughs> at this moment now. Mm-hmm. And... Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, the rivalry continues or yeah. doesn't. But um, yeah, okay. So you're so you're posing basically an interesting question. You're saying you know whoever uh, prevails in this fight, you know, might be might be the one to uh, to face Mayweather. Yeah, but also, but for Broner, uh, if the if the Mayweather fight doesn't happen, if he beats pa- Pacquiao, you know, there's also Keith Thurman, there's Errol Spence, uh, Mikey Garcia as well, because he's moving up in weight as well. There's also, um, uh, was, oh yeah, um, oh fuck, oh, why am I, right. why here am we I go, these out? blanks again, here yeah, comes well, Matt, blanking again, yeah, but, um, but, but yeah, your point, your point is, ta- is taken, right? and, um, but, um, yeah, your point is definitely well taken, I think, um, I think that, uh, that, yeah, it's, it is interesting, but but was you know my Terrence Crawford? That's what I meant. Terrence Crawford. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> um, my point is, wasn't uh, wasn't there rumors of of his? I mean, there was more than rumors of his retirement. You know, before this, so you know, Manny. It, yeah, Manny. Well, yeah. I mean, there have been rumors. I mean, but uh, you know, you know, it's. I mean, it's hard to say if this is. If 2019, uh, I mean, is he going to continue on fighting? Is, he, is this going to mm-hmm. be his last year? Because, mind you, he's still the senator of the Philippines. Mm-hmm. Right. And, you know, he is getting up there in age. Mm-hmm. I mean, he had a tremendous knockout victory over Lucas Matisse. Mm-hmm. And, you right. know, that was a tremendous knockout victory. But, uh, you know, again, that could have been, like, one of the last hurrahs for, for Manny Pacquiao. I mm-hmm. mean, this fight... I mean, this is going to be a real big test to see if, uh, you know, Manny Pacquiao still has it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And, you know, so anyway, I think I think I've kind of deduced where I'm at. I'm, I'm thinking I'm actually thinking, yes, you know, why, why would this not be his uh, last year? He, the, not to say that he could not have um, a lot of great victories in between here and then. Like he could still um, have, you know, several yeah, uh, depending on the schedule, I guess. He could still have several, you know, a few, uh, you know, good fights. And, um, you know, uh, I think he would still do better to have, like, one last good bout around this time, 2019, and then, you know, and then go out. <laughs> exactly. And if this is uh, his last year, then I, I would set your DVRs and, mm. yeah, you know, record them and do not erase them those fights for for the entire year because you know this could be the last time we ever see Manny Pacquiao in the boxing ring 
for a while for a long time you know forever yeah. so uh, yeah exactly exactly i mean frankly i kind of expected you to um, to actually to actually be on, on uh, more on the side of that he would actually you know continue on and why shouldn't he but, well uh, i don't know what's gonna happen you right. know we'll we'll have to see uh you know i mean They'll have to get past uh, Broner. I mean, personally, I think Broner is going to win. Uh, yeah. You know, everyone's uh, looking past um, Adrian Broner, but of course, uh, Adrian Broner is a four is a former four weight division champion. So uh, okay. don't yeah. sleep on Adrian Broner. Adrian Broner <laughs> yeah, is exactly. Floyd Mayweather with knockout power. Mm. So mm-hmm. and that's a fight I'm looking forward to. January nineteenth. I'm definitely ordering that pay per view. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And now uh, on to our second question the hell <laughs> we'll keep going yeah uh second question will ronda rousey have another successful year in the wwe mm. yeah because uh 2018 has been a good year for ronda rousey in the right. wwe she's pretty much been it's the good w- to hear yeah she's pretty much been the wwe's rookie of the year i mean right. had a great uh tag match at wrestlemania a good match you know and now mm-hmm. she's uh you know the women's champion she's really been the head Ahead of the WWE Women's Evolution, and uh, right. you know, I mean, it really has. And now she's going to a big match at TLC this weekend with mm-hmm. uh, Nia Jax, a second match with Nia Jax. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. you right. know, she her promos have gotten better. She's been in a, some good matches on Raw and pay per views. Oh, okay. Good. So I mean, it really, I mean, this really does paint the big question. Twenty nineteen, is she gonna have? successful year you know is she, is she gonna have another big year right well that's a good that's a good point and that's a good question and i guess you know um you know i i know we've we've talked before about the the uh you know differences of the sport she left and the differences of the you know the sport if you want to call it that she's in um you know i uh you know um you know i i think it basically you know i i feel like you know if if uh if you know, if she does have what it takes for us to live up to her expect expectations of her, you know, at least now with everything that's happened, and at least you know where she's at, then um, you know, then uh, then yes, she very she should, she should have a, a good year, and she yeah, should. because well, the thing is, we don't know what the WWE writers have in store. We always, right. you know, there's if you're a wrestling fan, you always hear you know the rumors. You know, they're like, well, mm-hmm. we have. They're having this plan, and you know, and of course, we're not that far away from WrestleMania. You know, we got the Royal Rumble coming up next month, and then right. two months later, it's WrestleMania okay. in New York at the uh, MetLife Stadium in uh, New York okay. slash New Jersey. <laughs> got it. Um, so, well, my prediction, it well, here's what I think. Here's how I would do it with Ronda. Okay. Uh, have Ronda lose the title at WrestleMania. Have her unbeaten streak uh broken at wrestlemania okay and then uh have her still be a be a baby face but then towards SummerSlam, right right before SummerSlam, turn heel turn into a villain mm. and then have her and then summer slam boom put the title back on her mm. Mm. gotcha gotcha yeah, I mean, yeah, that's fascinating. It's a whole, it's a whole different, you know, it's a whole different set of rules. You know, we've talked about how this is, how that's, you know, how it's a lot more entertainment, and that would definitely be the entertainment business well, route to take. Well, of course it is. You know, professional wrestling is, is entertainment. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, uh, yeah, the ratings on Raw and SmackDown have really been low like these past few weeks, and um, you know, it's not necessarily the wrestlers' fault. I mean. But uh, we all know, as wrestling fans, what we're watching. We're not. We know we're not watching a fight. I mean, we're not watching a real MMA fight or anything. We're. Wa- this is entertainment. They're entertaining us. Right. And yeah, there are some angles that could be better. Yeah, there are some wrestlers that should be getting more of a push and what have you. But at the end of the day, it is entertainment. Doesn't mean we can't criticize it. I mean, mm-hmm. there are some stuff that could be criticized. But when we criticize it, and by we, I mean myself you and also our good friend Prema. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah our good friend Prema and some other fight fans you know we criticize it because we want the product to be better mm-hmm. you know we don't just complain just for the sake of complaining mm-hmm. you know we want the product to be better mm-hmm. 
you know, I mean, the women have really stepped it up, and you know, and it's not just you know Ronda, it's Nia Jax, Sasha Banks, uh, Bailey, Charlotte Flair, Oscar, mm. mm. um, yeah. Carmella. As a matter of fact, actually, Carmella, she's actually uh, from Boston, Massachusetts. She's called, really? uh, yeah. Well, her gimmick is that she's from Long Island. She's called mm. the Long Island, uh, the Princess of. Staten Island, actually. Good, right, but she's right, really right. from mm-hmm. Massachusetts. She's uh, and get this, she's she was a New England Patriots um, cheerleader and also a cheerleader for the Los Angeles Lakers. No way. <laughs> yeah, Patriots girl and a Laker. Girl. <laughs> and and get this, her uh, dad was also a, a professional wrestler himself. No way. Yeah, he was a jobber. Okay, gotcha. Well, there you go. You know, long long line and um, and yeah, I guess. I guess for those of you that you know that are like, yes, it is entertainment. Then, then yes, she's also she's also has been an entertainer in other parts of her life. Well, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So, uh, so yeah, you know, we don't know what the future holds for Ronda Rousey, but uh, I'll tell you one thing, man. She has had a good year in 2018, and mm-hmm. I, I think sky's the limit for her if, uh, you know, if the WWE played the play their cards right. You know, you know the writers and all that. If they put her in with the right opponents and they keep the storylines great with her, she will soar. Mm-hmm. You know, she will soar. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And I've I've kind of been say, you know, I don't know if I said this last time, but I've kind of been you know thinking this is that like you know, um, is that it's true that it's, she uh, she really um, you know she really is set up to be you know uh, to be to be one of the one of the best in, in this, you know, just because, you know, she has the name recognition, she has the pull, you know, from, you know, from other fight fans, she has the pull yeah. from mainstream media, you know, um, before all this, and so, you know, um, she does have the pull, and she does have the name recognition, and so therefore, you know, as long as she, as long as she can uh, do what's expected in this arena, as I've been saying, then, you know, then yeah, she, re- she really does have it made, you know, um, yeah, she really does have it made, you know, in this in this uh, in this new arena. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And now uh, moving on to our third question: mm-hmm. uh, Will Fedor Emelianenko be the new Bellator heavyweight champion? Of course, uh, January twenty six. Uh, no, wait, January twenty six. That's on a uh, that's on a Saturday, right? I don't know. <laughs> oh wait, no, wait. I, I, I just got into the new year. Like I figured, as far as January fifteenth, well, yeah, that's for as my, far as I can go. My phone has the calendar, but uh, oh, good lordy. Oh yeah, but uh, anyways, uh, Fedor will be fighting Ryan Bader in the finals mm-hmm. of the heavyweight Grand Prix okay. in Bellator to crown the new heavyweight champion. Nice and. Of course, uh, that's the big question. Is Fedor going to be the new heavyweight champion? And let me tell you something. I'm still torn on this one because mm. Ryan Bader, of course, is the light heavyweight champion. And I want to see Ryan Bader be the both the light heavyweight champion and the heavyweight champion of Bellator. Nice. Never yeah. been done before in the company's history. And I want to see history be made. But on the other hand, it's Fedor Emelianenko, you know, pride legend, fought all over the world, legend. You know, he's been on a roll this year. And, and of course, knocking out Chell, douchebag, Sonnen. <laughs> so, yeah, yep, uh, I knew that was coming. Uh, still torn on this one, man. Mm. You know, still torn. So, uh, I don't know. This is, uh, this is a pickup for me. Right. So, wait. are you, I guess the question is, are you torn on whether he should be or are you torn on whether he, uh, you know, strategically he will be? strategically will oh, he be okay okay interesting interesting what do you think about whether he should be uh should should he be uh should he be on paper yeah because it'd be like you know the you know he's getting up there in age you yep. know it'd be nice for him to go out as a champion i mean yeah but at the same time but it's like i said you know mm-hmm. it's like uh this is a pick em because you know on the ground they're both great they're both good grapplers you know fedor's got that sambo and Mm, judo and then and ryan bader you know he's a great collegiate wrestler but on stand-up you know they're both pretty good i mean they both got knockout power in their hands and Mm, it's like uh mm. one punch can can end the fight right right exactly yeah this is one of those we'll see yeah it's one of those fights where it's like uh dude 
do not blink. Mm. Mm. Yeah, do not take Don't your blink or you'll miss it. Yeah, do not take. Do not take your eyes off the TV set for right. one second. Like, don't go on Twitter, don't go on Instagram, don't go on your cell phone or anything. Your phones like away, that. yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You do not want to take your eyes off this fight. Mm, mm, mm. So uh, it's just, gonna be fascinating. Yeah, it's definitely gonna be gonna definitely be fascinating. But of course, no matter who wins, we will crown a new heavyweight champion. And this tournament has been great all year. I mean, of course. Uh, this would be a lot better if uh, the dog was here because we started off uh, this tournament talking about predictions and, and stuff when the dog was here. And, of course, right. the dog hooked up with the uh, douchebag, and now the dog has left. Yeah, and, and, and we don't have to focus on that. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I, uh, we understand. And, um, and yeah, we're looking, we're looking forward to seeing what, what happens, what the hell happens. Yeah. By the way, we're we're not mad at the dog. We're mad at the douchebag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. All right. And now we're going into. And now we're going go into our New Year's resolutions. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, special segment for this end of the year. You know. Yeah. Special. So uh, I'm going to start off with you. Uh, you got New Year's resolutions? Yeah, I definitely do. I feel like um, you know. Uh, there's, I feel like we both, you know, we, we've uh, come, kind of come face to face with our mistakes and like, you know, uh, you know, tried to figure out better ways of doing things. And, you know, sometimes we really have, sometimes we really have made better ways of doing things. But, um, but yeah, uh, in terms of, you know, um, gonna, uh, gonna, I'm gonna, one of the things I want to be a lot more mindful and a lot more purposeful. Mindful oh, of what good. I'm doing, and I don't, you know, screw up, <laughs> and you know, and uh, and that type of thing, and um, and yeah, then also also more purposeful, you know, uh, you know, um, it's it's one thing to avoid mistakes, but then after that, I want to be able to get closer to what I want. <laughs> we want to be able to get we want to be able to get closer uh, to our goal. You know what I mean? Well, exactly. You know, I've been saying before. You know, 2019, I want. Uh, Bloody Knuckles Productions to be a well-oiled machine, mm-hmm. and of course that means uh, I'm going to have to be a pain in your ass. But, hey, here uh, we go. I knew you were going to say that, <laughs> but you also don't know how some things go, and so exactly. you don't know how to avoid the pitfalls, you know, and, and that's yeah. where I help you out, you know what I mean? Exactly. Uh, you know, I have to avoid my own pitfalls, you know, to in order to do that. <laughs> so, yeah, that's definitely high on my list, New Year's Resolution. Yeah. Um, Anything else? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then also, um, you know, also, uh, um, yeah. I guess, I guess, uh, try and uh, try and be uh, be be nicer is like a you know kind of like cliche thing, but like you know um, to um, you know to to reach those goals with uh, you know with uh, with more cooperation, you know, when possible. Well, yeah, you've always said that, uh, you know, you said as long as we've been doing this show that in order for things to get done, it's done through cooperation. Exactly. That's right. That's right. That's what I believe. Um, so, yeah, be more cooperative, be more mindful, and uh, and um, and like I said, go uh, more, um, I want to say forceful, but that's you know, not the right word, but more direct, going, going for what we need. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, of course, mm-hmm. of course. So those are like, uh, so those are the two things. Uh, well, those are your two. That's actually of- three, but yes. Yeah, so, um, let's see if we can make it even an even four. Also, um, you know, also just um, you know, goals we need and um, you know, um, being grateful. Actually, that's the other thing. Uh, we have to, be, we have to, you know, go for what we need, but we have to, you know, there are, like I said, there are things that we, uh, that we need to have happen for, for, for that. And so, um, being grateful to those that other people that can provide that for us. Well, yeah, of course. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You know, being grateful and, uh, you know, showing, you know, showing gratitude and stuff. And, um, because, you know, we don't. Because in life we don't always get what we want, you yeah. know. But uh, we, but we always, but we can always strive, you know. We can always strive, and you know, we get closer every, 
every day, you yeah, know, exactly. with stuff. As the Rolling Stones said, actually, you don't always get what you want, but if you try sometimes, you get what you need. Yep, exactly. Exactly, and exactly. Uh, you know, and that's what we we try to do with Blade Knuckles uh, production. We always yep. try to get what we need, mm-hmm. you know, and stuff. And of course, uh, you're actually working a, a second job working with Jabari, you know, to with money to get what we need, you know, you know, exactly for stuff with more business cards and mm-hmm. all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, making another creative collaboration so that we then you know can uh, can help this creative co- collaboration. Oh yeah, absolutely. Why not? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, also, it, and it helps you. And it, basically, this is this is how we make this happen for you, the fans, as well. Yeah, absolutely. And also, shout out to Jabari, man. What's yeah. up, dude? Yep. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. And uh, for my New Year's resolutions, oh geez, where do we start? <laughs> right. Uh, let's see. Well, uh, also just uh, getting better with um, you know with my diet. Mm-hmm. Um, of course, uh, I went to the doctors uh, last week, and mm. you know I'm doing pretty good. Uh, you mm. know, you know, I'm, actually this week I've lost uh, 160. I'm down to 167. Nice. Uh, a couple weeks ago I was I was down to 169. Now I'm down to 167. You know, I'm back to dancing for exercise and also walking. Um, of course, it is chilly out there, but I walk. Right. Uh, the thing is, I'm 15 minutes away from my uh, from the train station mm-hmm. where I live, so like right. uh, I walk there, and sometimes in um, yes, uh, not not yesterday, but a couple of days ago when I had to do grocery shopping, like I walked to you know to the Walgreens, and then I walked all the way to the grocery store, which is near the train station, and then right. I took the bus, and then I went back to Walgreens and walked back to my house. <laughs> there you go. And then yesterday... Uh, lots of walking. Yeah, you, you, even in cold yeah. weather, you got to keep it up somehow. Yeah. You got to keep it up. If you can't, you know, walk outside as much as you can, and then when you can't, you know, like you go to, like I go to the gym, you know, you got to, you know, do, do something, some things like that. And, yeah, and I and then yesterday, I like the, you know, what I like to do is I like to dance, you know, I do like you know, yep. dance moves and stuff like that, and you know, I dance. Yeah, this for guy's about... a, definitely into definitely into MJ, definitely into <laughs> yeah, Michael Jackson, New Edition, and yep. Sing, yep, Indeed. New Kids. Mm-hmm. Uh, I dance for about an for about an hour and thirty minutes. Mm-hmm. Good. And um, good, yeah, I get my exercise from dancing too sometimes, and you yeah. Know, Absolutely, you know, and, sh- and sh- like shake it off, shake off the shit is the other, is the other thing with dancing, like that's my op- opinion on it. Shake you also shake off the shit you know that you've kind of dealt with in your life when you dance. Yeah, exactly. But uh, but yeah, you know, I mean, I. But once it gets warmer, I'm gonna start you know jogging and stuff. You know, I don't there like to. Go. You know, I don't like to work out in the in the winter time. You know, it's like. Uh, you know, I mean, come on. You know, I'm not, I'm not just alone. You know, uh, you know, I'm not gonna be like jogging in the in the yeah. snow and yeah, like exactly. cutting cutting wood <laughs> and all that shit like in Rocky Four. Right. Exactly. Yeah, it may look good in the movies, but it's like, uh, it's like when you, you know, you try doing or like, uh, you know how like you had Paulie on the sled and he was like doing yeah. like bear crawls and you're just like, you know, you're like. Huh? this <laughs> totally <laughs> yeah totally totally but but sometimes you know a, a jog you can actually you can actually get yourself warmer that way but you know yeah but yeah not for you know i understand you don't want to do it too long you know in the freaking freezing temperatures yeah unless i'm like finding some russian dude <laughs> <laughs> right exactly uh my other new year's resolution is uh well 2019 i'm going to make this my final year of doing weed because um you know one part of also being healthy is also like uh you know i'm also on some medications and my doctor uh recommended like he said she said like, look you know like with the meds you're on it you know it'd be best if uh you know you not do so much weed or not do weed at all and plus my mom's like well you really have no business doing marijuana anyways and I mean, don't get me wrong. Well, I was you about know. to say, moms don't always know that. <laughs> yeah. Moms don't always know. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, that's and, my take. Yeah, and plus, uh, you know, and plus, I didn't get to do uh, 420 this year, so mm-hmm. I'm gonna get it all out of my system. <laughs> you know, okay. I mean, I got I got pretty high um, 
Fourth of July though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. both got pretty high that that Fourth of July, and I got high uh, like I think like a couple weeks after that. And mm-hmm. uh, we should specify for uh, you know everyone across the country and whatnot that uh, that weed is legal here in Massachusetts. So yeah, so come we're on, not talking about <laughs> yeah, we're not talking about uh, you know illegal substances technically. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, 2019 is mm-hmm. my last year of weed, right. and uh, we will do a 420 episode this year. Okay, okay, yep. good. Stay do, tuned for that. <laughs> yep, do that. Mm-hmm. Uh, my other New Year's resolution is uh, I'm going to go to, uh, I'm going to try and um, go out to more social events and stuff. I'm part of uh, Secret Boston. Mm. And, Interesting. Uh, yeah, part of that is also yeah. That's actually yeah. That's actually good. I was gonna I was gonna ask you more about that. We've talked about you going out to more social things. So well, yeah, because uh, you know, because I do need a girlfriend. Mm-hmm. So uh, mm-hmm. and that's also part of my New Year's resolution as well. <laughs> right. You know, yeah, to you get go. a you know to find a companion and. Well, uh, and yeah, okay. Don't confuse a resolution with a um with a specific goal that with a specific you know, complicated goal that you may or may not get do. <laughs> like, that's, I don't know. That's my problem with the, with the traditional, like, my resolution is, like, you know, if, if it's if it's something like get a girlfriend, that's, like, you know, this huge task, that, you know, that you may or may not uh, accomplish. Whereas, you know, to, to be more active socially, that's something you can accomplish. <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess you, got, you might have a point there. Yeah. <laughs> also, um... Also, it's my New Year's resolution is also to to have a date for for uh, Valentine's Day as well. Okay, yeah, because for Valentine's Day, I really want to do something. I, re- you know, I really want to go out on a date. You know, I, re- you know, like you know, I'm talking dinner, maybe dancing. You know, mm-hmm. something like that, something romantic. I really want to do something romantic for for Valentine's Day. Mm-hmm. Uh, and by romantic, I mean with a girl, not with this guy. <laughs> yeah, no offense, yeah, yeah. dude. <laughs> <laughs> no, trust me, none of us were thinking. Um, but no, um, yeah, no, I, I, I get it. And the, this guy wants to wants to be the next next face of the next romantic movie. No, um, no, you know, you, uh, you know, you definitely, you definitely should. Uh, you know, again, not. Not too much like pressure on yourself, but that's actually good as well to to decide to be uh, more romantic, to decide to try and find a lady. You know, that's that's exactly right. That's you know that that's uh, that's what resolution should be about. Yeah, and finally, um, my is to try to get better at uh, letting go of my past traumas. Uh, mm-hmm. I've been working very well with um, with my therapist. Um, good. You know, my ther- my new therapist, uh, she is, me and her, we have been working pretty well. Of course, uh, my other therapist, the mouse, she's, uh, you know, since then she's moved back to New York. Mm, yes. And uh, my other therapist, uh, for client, um, doctor, uh, privilege, confidentiality, um, yeah. uh, I'm going to call her the, I'm going to call her Blondie, um, me and Blondie, we've mm-hmm. um, you know we've worked well, you know we've we've worked pretty well, and um, right, and you know we've been working on other stuff as as well, and yeah. we've also been. Well, you work- mentioned letting go of the past, and I think that's that's a you know really admirable goal, you know, and and uh, you know, and yeah, it's not always easy, <laughs> you know, like it's not. Uh, kid ourselves but um but yeah as long as as long as you are actually you know aware of the problem as long as your eyes open then you know that's yeah. the first big step you know what i mean yeah exactly and uh also and on a further note uh to any single females who might be out there listening mm-hmm. uh i do want to be be married but just so you know i don't want kids okay yeah it's not but... because i don't like kids it's just that um with with Asperger's, it's uh, uh I'm a little too selfish. Mm. I'd be I'd be too selfish for for kids. Well, that's a that's an admirable uh that's an admirable um, admission. But you are you are jumping the gun a little bit. <laughs> yeah, 
yeah. But um, but yeah, no. It, this uh, I was I was about to say you are pretty, you would have been pretty good back in the '90s at the video dating service. <laughs> That's pretty much it. you know you would have uh, you would have uh, done pretty well with that. The whole you recorded on a VHS and then you know <laughs> whatever that was a good video message right there. Yeah, or like that guy from Family Guy. From Family Guy. Please, ladies, I have no standards. <laughs> yes. <Good. laughs> oh my God, there's blood in my mucus. <laughs> Right, exactly. Hopefully you wouldn't be like him. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Um, good. Good Good resolutions, Matt. I yep, good res that. and good resolutions on you, too. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. you know, uh, you know who else should, uh, submit, should make some resolutions? Mm -hmm. Tara Reid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you heard, but uh, she's suing... The uh, the producers of Sharknado because um, what? <laughs> well because they they had like a the a slot machine with uh, with her and Ian Ziering's face on it and she's uh -oh. suing because they put her face on it and they said like they have no permit she's had no permission or whatever <sighs> and it's like oh yeah you know it's like you know you this is a you've done six shark nato movies with these people they pretty much put money in your pocket and you got nothing else lined up for you and it's like this is how you repay them yeah yeah this is a money grab this is a money grab <laughs> right interesting yeah i mean you know i i i gotta i kind of like see both ways but at the same time you know the from what i hear these shark native movies are god awful so if you agree to six of them you stepped in it yourself anyway <laughs> yeah they're yeah they're god awful right movies. i mean i mean i still want to watch it i still think i still I'm, I'm sure there's still some special effects in some of them that are you know pretty good but <laughs> but uh yeah anyway <laughs> But yeah, god awful. And so sorry, you agreed to six to six freaking you know crazy movies like this. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, she's pretty much fucked at this moment. And now we're gonna get back to our uh, to our list here. Yeah, yeah. All right, number four. What will be boxing's biggest match of 2019? Wow, this is this is actually a pretty good one because. Uh, of course, as we mentioned, there's uh, Pacquiao and Broner. Right. Um, Errol Spence versus uh, Mikey Garcia. That's going to be Fox's first uh, boxing pay-per-view. Mm, okay. Um, also, Deontay Wilder and uh, Tyson Fury, they're having their rematch. Uh, they just had their fight that ended in a draw. Right. Yeah, and they're aiming for a rematch, uh, I think sometime in April. And Terrence Crawford, um, he's trying to finalize a deal with Amir Khan to have a fight in March. Mm -hmm. And that's actually supposed to be a pay-per-view in, um, in March by Top Rank for ESPN. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then, of course, there's Mayweather, the possibility of Mayweather coming back for Pacquiao yep, or Broner indeed. or whoever. Indeed. And uh, Canelo Alvarez says that he wants to fight uh, Cinco de Mayo weekend. Mm -hmm. So okay. another Cinco de Mayo bout. This guy's pretty <laughs> fond of those. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So it's gonna be a big question to see uh, who's what's gonna be the big fight of 2019. Mm -hmm. I mean, because you know it's gonna depend on uh, you know what's gonna bring in the most money and mm. you know like who's gonna be fighting who and right. Oh, here's the other thing. What 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 do you consider like the the what makes the the um, a big fight the biggest fight? Uh, is it is it the amount of audience, the money, or like uh, I guess the amount of audience is kind of like this, but the amount of people talking about it and the people that really you know the kind of like discussion around it and the hype around it. Well, I think it's I think it's a little bit of a little bit of everything. You know, okay. I think it's a little bit of everything. Right. So you know, whoever, whichever one scores high on all three of those things. Yeah, probably... exactly. And, you know, the thing about uh, fighting and selling fights is, and Paul Heyman, Paul Heyman said it best uh, a few years ago on um, on the MMA Hour with uh, Errol Kawani. Uh-huh. Uh, it's, uh, who are these guys, to, who are these two guys that are fighting? Right. Why are they fighting and why should I care? Mm. <laughs> and if you can answer all those three questions, then you'll sell a pay-per-view. 
Interesting. And it's funny because, like, as a, as a casual fan and someone who doesn't always, you know, tune in, I actually those are actually the questions I would ask. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, if you can get two out of three of those, you'll yes. you can sell. Oh well, yeah, 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 exactly. Um, but you know, but yeah, that's uh, that's kind of that's kind of what I would ask as well. So, um, so yeah, he he has a good point there. Well, exactly, especially with uh, Deontay Wilder and uh, Tyson Fury. You know, ever since you know, I mean the. Their fight went to a draw. Now there's talks of a rematch. People mm-hmm. want to see that fight again because now it's brought the heavyweight division, you know, back to its uh, glory days now. Mm-hmm. You know, people want to see this fight. They recognize Deontay Wilder as the real heavyweight champion. Right. I mean, Anthony uh, Joshua is also another heavyweight champion as well, but they don't consider him the real champion until he's... Uh, Till he's fought Deontay Wilder, mm. they try to bring that fight together. But uh, Anthony Joshua's uh, promoter uh, Eddie Hearns, uh, he's he's uh, you know he's having him fight another guy. Okay. And it's like uh, you know, but that's another big fight that needs to happen in 2019. Right, right, right. As well, you know, and you know that's a, f- I mean that's another big fight that definitely needs to happen. Mm. You know, mm-hmm. because we need to see the best fighters fighting each other. Right, totally. And nothing against the lighter weight divisions, because those lighter weight divisions are great. You know, like I said before, we got the Keith Thurmans, the Terrence Crawfords, the Manny Pacquiao's, Mikey Garcia, you know, uh, Canelo Alvarez. I mean, Triple G, of course. I mean, we don't know when Triple G is going to fight again, but sometime soon. Right. But, you know, we want the heavyweight division back. We want it back to the days of Lewis, Tyson, Holyfield. Mm. You know, mm-hmm. Riddick Bo, George Foreman, like the '90s, our generation. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep. That's or right. even even further back in the '70s with the Ali's and the Frasers and Nortons and Foremans. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's a good point. That's a good point. Um, so I mean, the the '80s were more of the of the of the lightweight, correct? Well, so, the '80s were were more of the welterweights, the right. middleweights, and the super middleweights until uh, '80. 80, uh, 84, 85, 86, when yeah. Tyson came on the scene and started knocking motherfuckers out. Indeed, indeed. Um, but yeah, I was just, I was just curious. Would you would you say that we're sort of like back to that now, and that's why it would be best to go back to the heavyweights or what? Well, yeah. I mean, well, I think. Uh, well, like, what do you think the two twenty tens is basically? Uh, the twenty tens have been uh, the twenty tens have been the. The year of the little guys, uh, right. like, almost the decades of the little guys, mm-hmm. and I think uh, what boxing needs now is that it needs to be more. It needs to be a little more like the '90s. Like the '90s was, right. yeah, the '90s wasn't necessarily more. Do- yeah, there was heavyweights, but it was there were still more the little guys too. Like we had the Roy Jones Juniors, the Oscar De La Hoyas, okay, Julio yeah. Cesar Chavez, the Meldrick Taylors, Bernard Hopkins, yeah. Nell Sweepy, Whitaker, mm-hmm. Shane Mosley, and Mayweather came on the scene as well. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. we need, you know, we need diversity. You know, we need more than just one weight division dominating. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You know, we need all these weight divisions, but we still need the heavyweight division. Yeah. As exactly. Well. Exactly. So you want to you want to kind of steer back to the heavyweight, lean on the heavyweight. You know. Exactly. Yeah. And as far as what fight is going to be the biggest, I mean, I mean, it's gonna it's gonna depend, and it's gonna uh, the best way to describe it, it's gonna be like one fight at a time. I mean, mm-hmm. because. Like I was doing, um, I was doing the episode of the New Fights Volume One on the Beer and Brawl show, and I said, you know, there's a lot of fights for Terrence Crawford uh, to take. I mean, but of course, there's politics. You know, like Top Rank. You know, like, you know, Top Rank is producing their own fights. Uh, you know, you know, not wanting to get in bed with any of the other promotions. I mean, so they might, you know, get in bed with other promotions. You never know. Right. But uh, you know, there's. For Terrence Crawford, there's Manny Pacquiao, there's Sean Porter, there's Keith Thurman, Mikey Garcia, yep, there's yep. Errol Spence, yep. you know, there's Adrian Broner, there's also Mayweather, if Mayweather ever decides to come back out of retirement again. Yeah. Mm-hmm, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? There's a there's a lot of great fighters for uh for Keith for Terrence Crawford to fight. I mean, Terrence Crawford, you know, he is the modern day Marvin Hagler, you know. Mm. Except uh, you know, he's got better footwork, he's yeah. got that you know the the shoulder roll, the Philly yep. shell thing. He can, mm-hmm. you know, he can fight orthodox, and he can also fight uh, southpaw. You know, mm. he switches hands, and he's got fast hands too. Right, right, yeah, exactly. Okay, interesting.
interesting. And it's fusion. It sounds like you're talking about like fusion as well. Fusion styles, fusion, uh, you know, Southpaw versus the other, like, you know. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know, Terrence Crawford, you know, he's, he's fast too. He's got them fast hands, you know, <laughs> nice. Yeah. So we, so yeah, we should definitely see, definitely see more of that in action. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So, uh, we'll, we'll see come 2019, uh, you know, what, what's going to be the biggest, uh, fight, fight for boxing mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah and uh all right number five will 2019 be a big year for john jones mm. uh december 29th john jones will be fighting alexander gustafsson again in a rematch for the vacant ufc light heavyweight championship of the world okay and this is gonna be a big one because uh John Jones, of course, uh, coming back after a lengthy uh, suspension, mm -hmm. and part of me wants to say yes, he will have a big year because we've seen him come back before off of drug suspension. But the thing is, it's a matter of will he get suspended for, for drugs again? Will he get get another DUI? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and also it's also a matter of are his skills still going to be there because. No matter how long you've been in the gym, you know, practicing or whatever, there's still, you know, cage rust, you know, like, you know, is he going to be, be able to shake off that rust? I mean, look at Conor McGregor. I mean, mm -hmm. Conor McGregor, he was out for like like a year and a half, and he first fight back, and he, lose, he loses. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah, exactly. So uh, they get rusty. Cage rust is an interesting uh, phrase, but yeah. That's yeah, right. ring rust for boxing and kickboxing, cage right. rust for uh, MMA fighting. Gotcha, gotcha. Yep. So, um, yeah. I mean, it's 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 definitely it's definitely true. I mean, I feel like I don't know. I imagine you would have to um, you would have to be pretty polished and like you know, uh, or at least you know, like um, I think it's like whether or not you're used to it. You know what I mean? So, you, in order to get used to it again, like there's a lot of things where that's actually pretty hard. That's the hardest thing exercise we were talking with our with our resolutions um you know the uh sometimes the harder thing is just to uh is just to uh be you know in the habit of it and, but once you're in the habit of it things that you used to think were you know were very hard are actually you know not that hard <laughs> you know what i mean once you're in the habit of it you just you just do it and get through it you know what I mean? Whereas, uh, whereas you know, um, whereas getting back into the habit of it is sometimes just the thing that seems the most hardest to us. Well, yeah, absolutely. And the thing is, uh, you know, can John Jones uh, discipline himself where he's uh, not snorting cocaine or, mm -hmm. you know, he's not, uh, you know, drinking or, or whatever? It, the, the thing is, you know, the thing is with John Jones is that you know, here's here's how I look at it. Mm -hmm. You know, when he's in training, he needs to be on lockdown. Mm. You know, he just needs to just, from Monday through Friday, just be in the gym. Saturday, Sunday, be with his family. Mm -hmm. Monday, back in the gym. Mm -hmm. Right. And just do nothing else. Just train, see your family. Mm -hmm. Train, right. see your family. Fight time, boom. Right. Fight, after the fight, just go back to seeing your family. You know, take a week or two off from the gym, and then then just do whatever you want, but no drugs or anything like that. Right, exactly. Yeah, no, I mean, that's that's a, that's a big thing, you know, that's pretty much, uh, that's pretty much a big thing, you know, and, um, and yeah, you know, part of the, part of the reason, you know, um, part of the reason, you know, drugs are so, um, you know, such a, such a boundary, such a, um, you know, um, obstacles is yeah just is like just because of that it can completely take you off of um you know off the off of the rhythm you know it can uh can bring you back it's basically like regressing i've been thinking of this lately you know when you uh when you slide back fall back in your goals you know uh that's, that's like um you know uh drug you know there can be a lot of things but drugs can, can facilitate that they can just hit you off of your stride and then suddenly you know instead of instead of just being off the horse you're actually falling you know down the hill as well yeah exactly and the thing is you know john john really needs some good people around him i think he right you know his brothers you know are, are football players you know mm -hmm. they played in the nfl 
Uh, you know, he needs he needs those brothers in his in his ears. He needs good yeah. good people around him. That's and a also, good point because they're disciplined. Yeah. Yeah, and the thing is, a guy like John Jones, he doesn't need to be in the bars. He doesn't. You know, mm. if you if you gotta, and, and this goes for any athlete. Mm-hmm. You know, whether you're an MMA fighter, a basketball player. He's one of those athletes where he really does not need to be in the bar. He doesn't need to be in nightclubs. He doesn't right. need to be in nightclubs and bars. And, mm-hmm, you mm-hmm. know, he doesn't need to be out there at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, it's one thing if you want to go to a, if you want to go to a restaurant and, you right. know, you want to have a cheeseburger or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then yeah. after that, you know, it's like, uh, you know, but, but afterwards it's just like, okay, you know what, 10 o'clock. Let's play. Let's play the tab. Go ho- and go home. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Hey, I'm gonna need to take take over more of this for uh, a few minutes. A few minutes. Keep going. Okay. Take over. <laughs> take over. Okay. Take it over. Uh, but yeah, that's that's John Jones is just one of these athletes. You know, he he is one of these athletes that he doesn't need to be in in the bars. He, he you know he just needs to be in the gym and be at home. That's it. And, you know, it's kind of like um, um, Chris Heron. Uh, for those of you who, um, who read the book uh, Basketball Diaries and also saw the, uh, the ESPN documentary, um, 30 for 30 documentary on, um, when he, you know, he was, of course, known for um, being addicted to opiates. You know, he got addicted to the pain pills, and then eventually he got, um, you know, he got hooked on heroin. When he first uh, joined the Denver, the Denver Nuggets, you know, he was with uh, Nick Van a- Nick Van Axel and Antonio McDice, and of course he had a huge drug problem when he was in college. And they told him like, listen, you know, there's gonna be no, there's gonna be no smoking, no drinking, no drugs. You don't belong in the nightclubs. You know, we're gonna go to you know, when we're out on the road, we're going to go to dinner, you know, you're going to report into us, we're going to go to hotel rooms and stuff like that. That's the kind of person that John Jones needs to be. You know, that's the kind of person where, who needs to just, needs to go and train and just be, and just be with his family, you know, stay out, stay out of the nightclubs, stay out of the bars, you know, just... You know, after the fight, just go to the hotel room with your family and just be done with it. But uh, 2019, it's going to be interesting to see. You know, I mean, let's see if John Jones can can do this. I mean, part of me is rooting for him, but uh, you know, as they, you know, as they say in in sports, in entertainment, and in business, it's not about what you've done in the past. It's about what have you done lately, and it's going to see, we're going to see, uh, can John Jones uh, still keep up with the new generation of fighters, or has this sport passed him by? And I'm saying all this now, and rambling on, oh, and he's now out of the bathroom. <laughs> all right, all right. Yeah. I had to take a wicked piss on him. Yes, indeed. <laughs> All right, so. All right. Get on to the... Yep, and uh, we're getting into our... Uh... Oops. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> the wrap-up sound, but um, let's get into the last question. All right, the last question. Will PBC have a successful 2019? Mm. Yep, Premier Boxing Champions. Yep. Uh, Premier Boxing Champions, of course, uh, signed a three-year deal with uh, with Fox. Mm. They signed a uh, an extension deal with uh, Showtime. You know, and I looked at the calendar for all their fights, and you know, some yeah. of their you know their fights on Fox Sports One and mm. Fox. Mm-hmm. Uh, the big pay-per-view fight with Broner and Pacquiao, as I mentioned, and you know, I mean, I see the the quantity fights right i mean it looks like they look like good cards uh stacked from top from top to bottom Mm -hmm. but the bigger question is the quality of fights Mm. yeah you know it's kind of like um i compare this with uh movies with superhero movies because uh it's funny i mentioned this because uh 2019 is going to be the 80th um anniversary of batman oh really yeah in fact actually uh 
the sum the summer of 2019 is actually going to be the anniversary of the 89 Batman movie. Mm. And mm. for the summer, I'm going to call it the summer of Batman. I'm going to be doing Batman um, related topics. Nice. Nice. I'll have to join you on that. Oh yeah. Cause I, cause I love that. I love that movie. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's like, you know, uh, superhero films. Like if you, if you do one year of superhero films, like you t- do 12 superhero films in one year mm. and you yeah, have four, 12, well, okay, yeah. Yeah, if you do, if you put out twelve superhero movies in one year, mm-hmm. and you have four of them that are box office hits, but the other eight are flops, mm-hmm. then that is that's a real failure, right? Because it's like, okay, four of these are are great, but the other eight suck, mm-hmm. yeah. and that's really not a success, and the company doesn't make its money back. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. Exactly. Um, so you're saying, you know, um, you, uh, you, uh, you put out less, but they're like, you know, they're like the major hits. Well, yeah, exactly. Because, um, you know, you know, whether you're DC, whether you're DC or you're Marvel, when you put out these superhero films, you're, you got to make your money back. Mm -hmm. You know, you got what they say in entertainment, you got to spend money to make money. Exactly. Yeah. You know, you have to. And I know how you feel about the box office and all that, but <laughs> right. you know that's there's a box office there, so that way when your movie gets to number one, mm-hmm. you will you will make your money back. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not just the actors who make the money back. There's also the directors, the producers, the script writers, yeah, yeah. the uh, the caterers, <laughs> well, the makeup I was people, say editors next, but yeah, yep, yeah. the editors do. Yeah, yep, 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 indeed. I'm just clicking off this one little yeah, thing here. Yeah. But um, yeah, that's a good point. So you know, yeah, it's 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 true. Um, but 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 yeah. So I would, for me, that would be an argument for you know, um, for less of them, but make let's make them really great. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. And Premier Boxing Champions really has a lot to prove. I mean, I mean they've been around for for I think five six years now. Mm-hmm. But uh, now that HBO is um, you know HBO is gone. Yeah, mm-hmm. we, we miss you. We miss you, HBO. <laughs> I mean, well, not the channel, but the boxing. <laughs> but, you know, HBO Boxing is gone, and now uh, Fox and ESPN is moving into the pay-per-view business. Mm-hmm. And it's just going to be, it's going to be a real, it's going to be a real test, you know. Um, right. You know, it's not so much of how many fights they can put on, it's uh, how many good quality fights can they put on. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But I mean, I don't know. It's 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 interesting though because I don't uh, necessarily think that um, that it, let it translate as, as much like the whole the whole movie thing. You know, like uh, like you know they could they could also be putting on a lot of fights to uh, to like make sure that some good ones hit the wall. It can also be like the spaghetti on the wall thing like you know the um whether it's a cooked or uncooked spaghetti i know that's something people don't always do or know about but um but yeah throwing the whole throwing things on the wall until they stick is is a metaphor from that and that um you know it could i mean i feel like i feel like it could also be that it could also be they're making sure that several of them will stick and be good you know by putting so many out well yeah i mean i mean the the Errol Spence, uh, Mikey Garcia fight, that's going to be a big fight on pay-per-view because that's taking place at the uh, Cowboy uh, Stadium in uh, Dallas, Texas. Mm. And, you know, that's going to be a good one. Right. And, um, yeah, but Pacquiao, Broner, and Garcia versus Spence, those are the only two pay-per-view ones they have so far. Mm-hmm. And the rest are either going to be on Fox or uh, Fox Sports 1. Okay. And uh, those are going to be some good fights. Uh, so we're getting some free fights. Uh, for the most part, mm-hmm. but it's going to be a matter of are there going to be good quality fights? You know, are these going to be fights that are going to be great? Are we going to be talking about it through, throughout the year? Right, right, exactly. Yep. So, uh, so yeah, I guess, I guess, uh, I guess we'll find out. But, um, but yeah, I actually, you know, of the of the opinion that the that it's more likely that there'll be quite a few good ones, you know, with the amount of volume that they have. Um, but yeah, it does also mean that a lot of them go under the radar too. Well, yeah, you know, I mean, but uh, yeah, we'll we'll have to see, you mm-hmm. know. Also, Leo Santa Cruz, uh, one of my favorite fighters, is going to be fighting as well. Oh so, yeah, uh, yeah, I, lo- I love Leo Santa Cruz. I mean, anytime you you got a good Mexican fighter, 
yeah. fighter up there. You know what I'm saying? You know it's going to be fireworks. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So Indeed. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Yep. And uh, we're going to end it right there. And also, uh, just so you guys know, uh, we're going to be, once again, we're pushing the um, ringside episode. I know, I know. Try to be patient with us. Please try to be patient with yeah. us. But, uh, now, but now we're going to push it to the uh, weekend of right before uh, New Year's. Yep, so December can... 29th. Mm-hmm. Uh, we will be still going live um december 29th at two o'clock mm-hmm. you'll be seeing two fights marvin Hagler versus uh roberto duran and sugar ray leonard versus diane lawn yep that yep, will be yep. live at two o- at two o'clock saturday mm-hmm. afternoon and also uh don't forget that uh next uh that next week i will be showing the jingle brawl rock featuring the greatest brawls in boxing history the week before christmas nice and also uh the week of christmas a few days after christmas i'll be showing the new fights uh volume two on the beer and brawl show all right perfect yeah so, so from, from bean, bean town, town to your, your town, town this is the bean, bean town, town beat down matthew bars gabe Shamas. happy holidays whoop whoop